sun today. I think we'll see a mostly cloudy at least first half of the day, but then splashes of sunshine will start to develop around midday, right around the same time that we start seeing some showers and thunderstorms moving into uh, eastern New York and far western Massachusetts. Some of those storms may be locally strong, so we'll have to keep an eye out on them. I do think that most of them will tend to weaken somewhat as they progress uh, eastward. So let's take a look at the threat. Uh, it looks like we'll be dealing with uh, mostly, uh, again, out through western Massachusetts uh, and into eastern New York uh, for that slight risk for some severe thunderstorms. Your high temperatures today working well up into the 70s. Once again today, shade cooler than they were yesterday. Coastline again, one of the cooler spots where temperatures will likely stay in the 60s. We'll uh, put a fine, uh, finer uh, detail on those thunderstorms when you might expect them and how they'll behave once they work into the Boston area coming up for you in just a little bit. Rondella? Okay, we'll get back to you, AJ. Well, the Bruins' quest for the cup moves one step closer. Yeah, the beef dominating the St. Louis Blues in Game 3. Sports Center 5's Mike Lynch with the highlights. Hi, everyone. Good morning from St. Louis. And it's a great morning if you're a Bruins fan because they trounced the Blues last night, 7-2 the final. And now the Bruins have a two games to one lead with game four tomorrow night back here in St. Louis. Let's take a look at the highlights of this one. The Bruins put this away in the first period. The Tory Crew with a shot that gets redirected by Patrice Bergeron. She puts the Bruins on top, 1-0. That was mid-first period. Under two and a half from Johansson. The two players picked up at the trade deadline by Don Sweeney. Bruins lead it to Johansson. The two players picked up at the trade deadline by Don Sweeney. Bruins lead it 2 nothing. And there were seven seconds to go in the first period. Sean Corrales with a little snipe. He beats Jordan Bennington. That put the Bruins on 3 nothing. They led 4 nothing early in the second period. A 5-1 second period. The Blues hold Bennington. Bruins got two late goals to make the final 7-2. to two. We were ready to play. I, I didn't. I felt we would be because of the guys that have been here and done it, because we tend to respond well after a loss. So did I think we'd score three goals in the first period? No, but I thought we'd be ready to play and at least, you know, be in the game, be a competitive first period. They happen to win the goals. So an impressive win by the Bruins, and they can go up three games to one with the win in game four tomorrow night. With the Bruins in St. Louis, I'm Mike Lynch, Sports Center 5. Okay, Lynchy. And Lynchy will be live in St. Louis for game four. And also Game 6, if necessary, he'll have reaction from the locker room after every game home or away. Game 4 is tomorrow night. Puck drops at 8. Another community in mourning after a mass shooting at Virginia Beach. A vigil held at a church for the 12 people killed in Friday's shooting. The gunman's family posting a handwritten apology on their front door. Now the focus is on the investigation into what set off the gunman's rampage. The city of Virginia Beach mourning the loss of a dozen people killed in a tragic workplace shooting. The gunman, <laughs> Craddock, an engineer at the city's public utilities department, yeah. opened fire on his colleagues Friday evening. Going from floor to floor at the municipal building where he's worked for the last 15 years, armed with two 45 caliber handguns and indiscriminately shooting those in his path. So actively hearing gunshots. Craddock eventually killed by police. This is the most devastating day in the history of Virginia Beach. Yeah, Joseph Scott right. says he was one of the last people to speak to Craddock as he left work that Craddock, day Craddock. shortly before the deadly chaos. It was just a normal, hi, how you doing, have a good weekend thing, and I left. Scott says the news left. has left him overcome with emotion as he mourns his colleagues, including Craddock. He's not evil. He was just another guy. Had Police don't yet idiot. know Craddock's motive. Three people remain in critical condition. The grief taking a toll on this coastal community. The Craddock family posting this sign on their door, sure. sending their heartfelt condolences to the victims. Yeah, that makes and sense. President Trump offered his condolences on Twitter, oh, writing, yeah. God bless the families yeah. and all. Yeah. Right now, the surge continues for the people responsible for two separate shootings in Boston. That left one person seriously hurt. Officials say a person has life-threatening injuries after a shooting on Imrose Terrace in Dorchester yesterday. The Globe reports the victim is a man. 
The second shooting happened on Howland Street in Roxbury. The Globe reports a man was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No arrests so far. Uh, heads up if you plan to shop at the Natick Mall today. Local first responders will be conducting a large-scale critical incident response training exercise. There will be a large law enforcement presence at the mall during this time. But again, it is just a drill. No need for concern. Businesses will not be impacted. The training will be held from 6.30 to 10.30 tonight. We'll have to watch We're that for future reference. Right now in the case of a missing mom in Connecticut, this morning police have reportedly obtained DNA samples from her estranged husband. The Hartford Court reports that police have started searching the home of Fotis Dulos after finding traces of blood. It's been more than a week since Jennifer Dulos was last seen dropping her kids off at school. The search for the mother of five is intensifying. Police asking for the community's help, stopping cars and showing flyers of that missing mom. She would never, ever disappear voluntarily, uh, which just makes us all the more fervently hope for her safe return home. Her disappearance coming after a bitter custody battle with her estranged husband. Police refusing to indicate whether they have a suspect or persons of interest in the case. With the bomb. A A hearing is scheduled for the case of actor Kevin Spacey. That's tomorrow. It comes after a judge ruled last week that his lawyers will be able to access the alleged victim's phone. And that the restaurant where the incident allegedly happened must also turn over its surveillance video. Spacey denies in a appropriately touching a young man at a Nantucket restaurant bar in 2016. The DA confirms Spacey does not need to appear. Uh, Ahead of his state uh, visit uh, to the United Kingdom, President Trump is weighing in on Brexit. The president telling the Sunday Times that the next British prime minister uh, should walk away from the <coughs> and reach a deal to withdraw from the European <coughs> Union. The current prime minister, Theresa May, will step down on Friday. Currently, Britain is set to leave the EU in October. The president and the first lady will arrive in London tomorrow. Now, the U.S. Navy acknowledging that it did receive a request to keep the USS John S. McCain out of sight while President Trump's visit to Japan, but it did not what? comply. The military saying yesterday that a request was made to minimize the visibility of the ship, which bears the name of the late senator and frequent target of President Trump's criticism. It's unclear this morning who made that request. Get the fuck Pride out of here. Pride is on display in Faneuil Hall, Boston, kicking off Pride Week with the annual Pride Day. Day. Hundreds gathered yesterday for a day full of fun at the marketplace. The event featured music and entertainment by local artists. The festivities wrap up with the Boston Pride Parade next Saturday, but the entire month of June has been designated for Pride events. Fall River's Public Library hosting its first ever Drag Queen Story Time. Yesterday's event was initially met with major opposition, but ended up attracting hundreds of supporters. The room was packed, standing room only. Drag Queen Naomi Chomsky had to hold three separate greeting sessions to accommodate everybody. Meanwhile, demonstrators prayed outside in protest. If the people aren't warned or informed or educated or anything like that, then they're going to be drug over by yet another immoral movement of America. No matter who you are, you're somebody who deserves love, you deserve respect, you deserve to have your identity uh, respected, your pronouns respected. A group of counter-protesters also assembled outside the fuck the out of here. Burn that the bitch Bishop of state. Providence, Thomas Tobin, is getting a lot of attention for a tweet about Pride Month. Yesterday on Twitter, he posted a reminder that Catholics should not support or attend LGBTQ Pride Month events held in June. They promote a culture and encourage activities that yep. are contrary to Catholic faith and morals. They are especially harmful for children. The tweet has been met with both support and backlash. Well, problem. another round of severe weather in the nation's midsection. Yeah, the latest storms adding to the misery, the damage that's already been done. And new concerns over 5G technology, why some believe it could interfere with weather forecasting. AJ. Sean, right now, it's all about the visibility. We've got uh, visibility down to about a half a mile in some spots. Really difficult to see and drive out there. This afternoon, our attention fish, uh, fixes on some showers and thunderstorms that will be coming at us from the west. We'll talk more about it coming up after this. Fucking freaks. Fucking freaks well, taking over the, the fucking crap. goddamn world. Show me homecoming. Baby's love videos on YouTube. You need to, uh, like, you giving someone else a turn. Up, I got a pizza for Amy.